60s child. Hello, in this video I thought we'd take a look at tabletop football games. So let's go! There's a capacity crowd here. The condition... To play Matchbox Soccer, all you really needed was a Matchbox and there was loads of them around in the 60s as nearly everyone smoked. Any Matchbox would do it, except this one because it was double the size of a normal Matchbox. You'd get your Matchbox, take all your matches out and draw yourself a make-do pitch. All you needed then was a dice out your snakes and ladders to determine how many kicks you got. And you use your fingers like a little man to flick the matchbox up and down the field till you got near the goals. To make the goals you just got your fingers like this and turn them upside down and there you go you had a goal. Magic in it. And here's the modern version I found on the internet. Tiddlywinks, you'll all remember them, little colourful plastic dish you used to sort of flick and try and get them in the cup in the middle. But did you ever play football with them? Nah, you didn't really need much, only a couple of tiddlywinks, a couple of plastic goal mouths and a car flag now and again. You got this type of stuff in them compendium of games you got at Christmas, remember those? Quite a skillful game was Tiddlywinks football. There was a posh version called Shoot Match Set. Ah, and it was basically the same, just a little bit posher. In games like Penalty, you had a set of sort of playing cards with pictures on and instructions telling you which way to manoeuvre up and down the field. Um, a bit strategic for me, but it sort of worked. It was alright. Got a bit boring after a while, if I'm honest. Blow football, if you grew up in the 50s, 60s and 70s, you will remember these. Basically, nothing complicated, just a straw or a plastic tube. You blew the ball up and down the field. Some sets even had cardboard cutout cups. And look at these goalkeepers. What's going on with them shots? Hey, <laughs> now you could cheat with this and actually suck the ball up, carry it down to the goal mouth, and blast it. But it wasn't very sportsmanlike to do that. So remember, blow not suck, and that's all I'm going to say. Let's move on. The bagatelle board, the forerunner to the pinball machine. I don't need to explain much about the bagatelle board, only that it had a lever, you pulled it back and fired a ball bearing round the board and tried to land in the hoop shaped pins. What I really liked about the bagatelle boards was the stunning artwork. It's just so retro, I love that kind of stuff. These machines went on through the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, still around today in some form or other. Not really much to do with football, only that it's got pictures of players on it and you score points by using a ball. Games like Super Soccer actually relied on the force of magnets to play football. Each player had a stick with a powerful magnet on the end. All the players had metal bases and you played on a thin board and you basically knocked the ball about till it went in the goals. To keep it simple it was five a side and it wasn't marvellous like the box said it was but it wasn't the worst game I'd ever played and it was quite a sturdy game at that, it took a few knocks. The Chad Valley soccer game was getting somewhere near it now. Not only was it very durable because the base was made of tin and the players did look a bit more realistic, but they actually kicked the ball. Now that was a big step forward. And not only that, the goalkeeper moved back in two. You had a set of levers at each end and you used them to make the player kick. Mind you, it's a bit complicated underneath. I think everybody will recognise this one. 
You know the one with the handles on each side and the players, you spin them and kick the ball with it. Great fun. Still going on, still selling strong. People even build their own. There's hundreds of different types, but they're all basically the same. Great fun to play, and there's no real complicating rules or anything with it. And I can't walk past one of these machines without actually thinking of Eric and Ernie and their classic sketch where they were the footballers. And if you've never seen this sketch, then I suggest you go on YouTube and have a look. Striker was a fabulous five-a-side football game. The players actually kicked the ball, you press the head down and the mechanism made the leg fly up and kick the ball. Not only that, but the goalies in the later versions dived as well. You could get floodlights for them. It was just a brilliant game. You could get your teams and then they started having left-footed players and different hairstyles. It was amazing and people still play it today. My older brother had the earlier version of this, the very first ones. And the men seemed a bit brittle because their heads kept breaking when you pressed them. But in later versions like Super Strike, they actually improved that. And also the goalkeeper, as I said, dived and his actual arms went out for the ball. Really clever mechanisms and a lot of fun to play. Kids could play it, adults still play it. I have actually got a full set of this somewhere. I'll dig it out and do a video on it one of these days. Yes, my number one is Subutio. Your two favourite teams fighting it out. They play whenever you arrange a cup tie in your own home every day. And who's the winner? Subutio table soccer every time. What can I say about Subutio that hasn't already been said a million times? Subutio is a game with little footballers with oversized balls. But seriously, if you're into football, this game has got it all, the strategy, the skill. And if that's not enough, the accessories were the biggest range of accessories to any game I've ever seen. You've got all the different types of ball. You've got special figures for throw-ins. You could get corner kickers and virtually any team you wanted. They had all the different leagues. They even had floodlit versions. The range was vast. You could get trainers and photographers and managers and referees and linesmen, TV people. You could get mounted policemen to control the crowds. Some people have even built their own stadiums and modified the figures so they've got goal scoring ones. And ball ref, get up your girl. Don't know what the dog's for, maybe it's a guy dog. They've got streakers. Look at that, the stadium floodlights and everything. Grown men still playing with toys. I love that. Why should kids have all the fun? The Sabutio sound. A full album of sound effects you could play in the background while you're playing Sabutio. And welcome to the game of the year. The one we've all been waiting for. is a match that had everything and one that certainly lived up to its promise it's only a pity that somebody usually has to lose but there's always another day another great match to be drawn lost or won when we'll join you again with the Sabutio sound. Sabutio is a superb game but I do think however he may have got his idea from Long Larder because you look at that scene on the docks where the gangsters are going to throw them in the water. Definitely Sabutio. Well, that's your lot from me with this video. So, you know what I'm going to say. Share, like, subscribe, etc. More importantly, enjoy. And I'll see you later.